Hi, Glenn here. Uh, it's been a while since I've done anything Houdini related and from a long break coming back to it. So I thought I'd put something together that would appease the newer people to Houdini. Uh, particularly people who knew CGI overall really. Uh, it's going to be very basic, very simple. I expect you just know the navigation tools were inside Houdini. That's, that's all that's required from this. So with that, we shall make a start. It's going to be like a paint effect. So we'll control click our sphere down and we shall call it the emitter because that's exactly what it is. I'm going to change this to, it doesn't really matter to be honest, it really really doesn't. Now we want to get some very quick and easy animation on this. I don't really want to go in and have to keyframe everything. I kind of want it automatic, I kind of want it a little bit random. Um, one of the best and easiest ways to do this is take your translates here and right click and we shall go to motion effects and we'll just drop a noise down so we, we don't need to see that, we can completely ignore it so this little window that pops up and this is showing what kind of noise we're generating so if we start screwing the timeline you can see it's very crazy, very jittery not quite what we want so I'm going to leave this running and I'm going to look and see what kind of noises we have and I think it's the ground yeah Look at this, it's long and way there. It's still a bit crazy. Uh, way, way too, too much. Let's bring down the amplitude quite a lot. And let's have a look at the harmonics. And we're just trying to find something. suitable for what we're actually looking for. Doesn't want to be too mad. Um, I'm going to wait, look at that, woohoo. There we go, let's go back to brown here. So maybe this will do for all intents and purposes. It's going to get crazy again now we've taken it off that. Oh well, not to worry. Not to worry in the slightest. So, moving on. So we'll jump back to our, our emitter. And what we want to do is we want to select the particles tab and go to source. This one here, source pack, particle emitter. So we'll move our motion effects out of the way. We need to select this, hit enter. Let it do its thing. So, I'll over the viewport, let's let this out just a little bit easier. And we'll hit play. Not particularly interesting at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm um, sorry I'm going to delete the gravity ramp because we don't need it. So this is what we've got. Yeah, not particularly interesting. So immediately I'm going to want to put a drag force down because we need to slow these down quite rapidly. Yes. Well, that's, that's okay. That's, that's okay. But again, it is slowing them down. But the effect itself is fairly disinterested. That's not really a problem. So we'll move it out of the way. So we'll just add a pop force. Pop force, there we go. We're just gonna drop this in. Now, pop force. Let's get this running. Let's think about what we want to do with this. Well, swell size, that will be a good start. Um, And it probably would help if we gave it a bit of amplitude. There we go. Make it really crazy out. So we've got these really big swirls. We have to lower the amplitude down now. And see what we're getting. And it's kind of going back to the way it was. I'm not massively keen on that. This I'm liking with the, the tendrils that are coming off it. This is going to be quite interesting, is it? So let's have a look at this. That's looking pretty sharp, to be honest. So I can zoom in here, and I'm going to drop a, a camera in for the time being. 
But we are going to go and turn our image well, so we don't wish to see that anymore. We'll go back to our source particles. And what we're going to do is we're going to put down a fluid, particle fluid surface. There we go. And depending on the number of points you've got in here is going to depend how long this is going to take. So, average position, we're going to leave it on that. Particle separation is the one we're going to be using here. You can change your voxel scales and all that sort of stuff. Um, filtering can get very computationally heavy, so just be aware of that. So, for this, I'm just going to be using the particle separation. This is only a, just a quick run into this. Uh, and as you can see, as the particle separation is coming down, those tendrils are starting to appear. But again, this is depending on how much strain you want to put in the machine. So we're up to like 227,000 points. And still cooking, still cooking. And we're getting a lot of tendrils now. Okay, so we're in this camera. I'm going to lock it. I'm going to have a look, look around at what we've got here. So I like the way this, this curves over, that's 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 nice looking. Kind of dragon fight, don't you think? Yeah. It's like a little dragon look, right? It's got its legs. Hey, there you go, two legs. Hey. So you, what you what we could do here is we could do something like this. And yeah, that doesn't, doesn't look too bad. So let's do quick data test render and see how things have gone with that. So oh, let's turn off. And while we're at it, let's uh, up the bucket size and the renders for 18 is way too small. Let's see what we get. So there's definitely a lot of detail in there. Definitely. And that is uh, frame 169, just so I don't forget. Uh, we did stop that. Yeah, we did forget. So, we now have this. We can drop an environment light in there. I'm going to drop the intensity down by 50%. And then I'm going to. I think I possibly want that in shadow. I don't know. Oh, it's Let's go with a fairly top-down area line. I'm going to back out just to see the actual area size of this, which in comparison to the model is pretty damn small. So, so 10 by 10 just to give us some soft shadows. It's going to take a little while longer to render in the frame. Just bear with me. Take a quick drink while I'm doing that. Okay, so immediately we're getting a far, far better idea on what's going on. Which is pretty good. It's far more interesting now. Far more interesting. So, a couple of things I want to do. Uh, first of all is I'm going to cheat. I'm going to do it is I'm going to control click a grid, okay, and then I'm going to bring this grid to here, and then I'm going to turn on the grid. Is it going to turn the grid to the camera? I don't quite remember. Huh. Maybe not. I can't remember how I was going to do it. I did have something particular in mind. So I'm going to drag this back. I'm just going to scale this up. Fill it colours. I'll see like this. And then I'm going to go here. I'm going to go down to utility. I'm going to get me a constant. And then I'm going to put the constant on the background. A white constant is absolutely splendid. That's what we need. 
Um, there should be no light interactions, no shadows or anything. It should just give us a, a white background. This is just a dirty and easy cheat route, and that's the building of all the studios. And, and as you can see, it's not actually affecting our model anywhere. And we can darken it down if need be, so that's not really a problem. Um, what we can do, if we look at the material palette, this is Houdini 17, uh, we do actually have a white paint. So let's utilize this. Pop that on there, in that view. And let's just do a little render here, just to make sure that it's actually picking the shader up. And we got all this beautiful shading effect. And as you can see, it is doing. There's a significant change on there. So I'm going to set that off to a full screen while we'll stop it again. And okay, okay, let's let's do something, something else. I'm only interested in the soft particles at the moment, so I'll focus on this. Right, we'll go inside. We've got our particle fluid surface. If we look back at our end of view, uh, one sixty nine. One sixty nine is the frame. So let's go back to zero. Now I'm going to add a bound. Okay, and what this is is going to wrap a box, uh, and it's going to expand to encompass all of our geometry as it's animated through space. So with this, um, I'm going to add a point stop. I'm going to add the old point stop from years ago. It's nice and easy. Where we can add color. And I'm going to do something simple as dollar. BBX, dollar BBY, and dollar BBZ. Some stuff I've not used for years. So, basically, this is just colouring the points based on the bounding box. So, as there's three dimensions, there are three different colours. And you, you'll see this. So, I'll go at really transfer. Look at that. Press A and then T three times and you're So, geometry of transfer attributes too. Well, that is our fluid. And then let's pop that on there. And as this starts moving through, this will start changing colour and all that good stuff. So if we go, what was it 169? Okay, 169. So 169. Let it do its thing. Boom. See, we have all these, these different colours based on the bounding box. So we'll do, now come to our render view. See what we get. Much more interesting. Much more interesting, incredibly abstract. Uh, if you wanted to, uh, you could get rid of the, the grid object. We've got our environment, whoops, our environment light in here, uh, which we could put an environment map into. So if you do have one, um, yeah, well, let's just take that off and we'll go with uh, Kayla Kiara Afternoon. Okay, this is an outside map. So render light geometry, make sure it's in the background. And you should be picking up a completely different effect with the HDRI in the background and all that good stuff. And again, there you go, the light completely changes now. Put the background in there. It just changes the lighting completely. So let's take that. Let's look at this white paint. The collectivity is at 1, I allow 1.5, let's ramp it up to 1.6. I may need to adjust the roughness down actually, and being all the way set to 1. 
so it's hard to see any speck of hurry on that. Yeah, it definitely needs some speck of hurry. kind of specularity going on there makes it far far more interesting uh, the other thing we do because we're using particles uh, we kind of get something for free although because of this drag it's not moving that fast <coughs> but if we have a look on here we have we have three point attributes and one of them is velocity so what we can do is render sampling velocity motion blur and then we can come to here and allow motion blur probably not going to make a great deal of difference like I say because the drag has slowed it down so significantly it's probably going to be kind of hard to see so let's just do a bit of that see how it's looking in the shadow areas as well properly I mean, what you can do, I guess I'm not going to do it, uh, but you could basically use a ROP output, geometry output, and you could save that one frame out and then load it back in. So you don't have to have the, the calculations of the particles or anything like that, you'll just be reading that one frame from the disk. And then you could do stuff like subdivide this, not with the open div, because it'll leave some funky artifacts. If you use the Houdini Camel Clark, you'll be able to subdivide this and make this a lot, a lot nicer, also to speak. Final thing, or what do I want to do for the final thing? Is camera's not locked, good, good, good. Um, I assume that's my camera there, the little dot. So I'm going to increase the icon scale. There we go. So I can see exactly where my camera is. And now. I'm going to space you on the camera, so I'm going to concentrate on this now. I'm going to right click the transform handle of the camera, somewhere, or another, where are you? There we go. And I'm going to go with focus handle. Now, the square block wants to be sort of in the middle, so this is going to be the, the actual part of where the focus is going to be. Now, it's got two little arrows, one's all the way over there. And one's just over here. So we're going to move these in. We'll move these in to about there. Like so. And basically, this is controlling the depth of field. So I'm going to go back to that camera. And uh, render view. Let's bring out Mantra again and enable depth of field. And it should. And your depth of field settings are controlled on the camera, not on the Mantra rod. So Sampling tab, this is what you're doing with shutter time, your focus distance, and depends depends which kind of focus you want, whether it's radial or image or whatever. But I wonder whether that's going to work, is it? We're going to it off properly. As you can see, the background's blurred out completely because it's no longer focusing on the background. It's already blurring here, you can see it from where it's actually aimed. So the depth of field is actually working. I'll just let this run its course for a moment. I 
is in tier 3 next, but I'm not so sure on that. It'll be less. And you can see we've got those little, little bits floating around in the air. All those different colours, little tangible bits. Depth of field is working. That's totally fine. We can alter the actual amount by the shutter time. That's, that's okay. Use the shutter time there. If you want more or less blur, it's entirely up to you. So we've got some reflections and specularity going on. That's perfectly fine. So if you were to carry on with this, play around with the shader. Definitely play around with the shader. Uh, you get all sorts of different uh, different effects. If you want to add some subsurface on there, you can do. Just be careful. It can get uh, computationally expensive when it comes to render time. And what else could it be? The source particles, by all means, uh, have a play with the filtering inside here. Just just be aware, it just can get a little bit on the greedy side. Oh yeah, that's definitely going to that. So, for that, I'm probably going to call this to a close now. This is only a quick uh, run down into, yeah, just something quick and easy. Um, take it whichever way you want from here. Uh, I've shown you how to get going. Um, if you didn't slow, if you reduce the drag node, uh, there would be significant amounts of motion blur on here. Uh, the fact that it isn't isn't really a problem. Um, but as you can see, this is just a quick and easy way of showing you how to produce something abstract. It didn't take that long, maybe 15 20 minutes, uh, plus the rendering, which probably took just as long as actually building it and getting it going. So, with that, I'm going to call it a do. Um, yeah, have a play, see what you can work with. It'll be interesting. I do like abstract stuff. So, with that, I'm going to call it to a close. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you again.